but they know that the medicine will help you and nobody interferes. They're just there to help. And this is very important. So space, 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 and again, space. That's why better just, you know, do it first, maybe alone. Or if you want your loved ones to do it, I did it separately. My husband did it separately, but after a few times recently, we've been able to be in the same room, but far away from each other and receive. Very cuddly. Very cuddly, yeah. Okay, maybe uh, you can introduce it, uh, introduce him to or her to the audience too. He he's having siesta, meaning uh, afternoon Spanish nap. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, uh, afternoon naps, which is siesta. So yeah, it's cookie. It's my dog. Mm -hmm. And it has to be in mom's arms. Yeah, the nap. No, not really. I was traveling for four days. So since I'm back yesterday, he's a little bit uh, cuddly and attached. Uh -huh. So those four days, he was away from you, Cookie. Okay. Yes, yes. I, I, uh. yeah. I was in my family. He was here in Mumbai. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't take him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cute, cute baby. I'm. Uh, I'd like to talk about something rather difficult about this oneness. But before that, let's talk about something that at least to me seems simpler to talk about, uh, which is set and setting. When it comes to different quote unquote drugs, I'd say that for everything, there's a time and place. Let's get it to take it to the extremes. Something that is really addictive, for example, opium, it was in our ancestors' lives and people in the past would consume it, but they were not necessarily addicted to it. There mm. were, of course, people who were addicted to it, but when you look at the grandpas or great-grandpas, great -grand they would consume it when they had an ailment or there were people around them who would consume it for their ailments. It was so integrated into the culture. They knew how to behave towards it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, and the ceremony around it, they kind of had a symbiosis, a coexistence with the drug that in fact served them rather than hurt them. But in the current time, we see that almost everyone I have seen so many lives destroyed by it. Uh, first hand, I have seen lives in very close fa family that's been destroyed by it. So let's go to, it brings, uh, I am trying to open the floor for talking about set and setting. Uh, so many people they take mushrooms, for example, uh, at a party. That's really not the place. It takes you places or it cannot take you the places it has the potential to because you are in the right setting. Yeah. Um, what's the right set and setting? And from your point of view, what importance uh, does it have in the journey? Yeah, it's a very good question. I, I feel the first aspect of setting and setup is your own intention. Um, we as a human being, we tend to use substances to escape life and reality. Instead of, for example, you came up with, a, with an example as opium. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I know in the past they used to use opium as a painkiller. Oh yeah. Um, it's the same thing with the pharmaceutical uh drugs. Currently, you can um when you have a surgery and you're in you know like you're in tremendous pain, you can use uh painkillers but there is a possibility of getting addicted to the painkiller as well. So we have this, I think it's a behavior thing. 
that we as a human beings, we can, we have the uh, tendency to abuse substances to escape life, even with coffee, that could happen. True, true. It could happen. It could happen. Even I feel that marijuana, the you know, grass has also spirit. And this could be also used to receive insights. And this, that, that substance has been abused all around the world, True. you know, but can't even sleep without, without smoking a joint. Um, it's the first thing I would say is your, your heart, your own intention. You have to ask yourself why you're doing it. First part of the setting and setup. Then I think first you ask yourself when you have the intention you know like you can, if you're honest enough to yourself you would know why you're doing it and uh, people using substances in the party is just because we go back to the conversation we had a few minutes ago if you're not in the flow if you're not that joyful child that you truly are you need substance to be able to remove the masks so alcohol does it, other drugs. I mean, I don't have experience with getting high and enjoying life. I am high in life <laughs> automatically. I You're need to already take some... there, the example that I, I gave am, But that's always the case. People know me as, as a child. I, I, I think I kept that. I, I can dance on the tables for hours and hours and tell my <laughs> friend, bring some alcohol in order to reach... <laughs> So you will think you're drunk to no a joke to the side. Uh, sometimes our mind is so conditioned that we don't that the life became so serious mm -hmm. that in order to have fun we have to take a substance to lose up. And that substances are addictive. Most of them, I think, I'm not. I don't want to say anything wrong, but opium as well because it's killing the pain. Oh yeah, anything, it is highly addictive. It does. So um. Well, you, going back to ayahuasca and other like ayahuasca doesn't have this at all. It's actually anti addictive Yes. yes. That's, that's why I, I relate with this medicine so much. I call it my medicine. It's because A, you don't ever crave it. B, it actually helps you to get rid of all the other addictions you have. It's balancing, mm -hmm. it's balancing all the biochemistry of your brain, meaning if you're dopamine addicted, Dopamine addicted people, they love to scold social media. They need to socialize ex excessively. They need to drink alcohol and all these things. Dopamine addiction is resets. With ayahuasca, you're able, you have the possibility to reset. That's why they tell you when you're going home, if you needed a bottle of wine to get drunk, now you need just a drop because your brain on the physical level has been reset. So your brain is reset but you didn't change the behavior pattern. If you're not changing your habits, because this is a different thing. If you think you need that bottle to have fun, you have the tendency to go back because you didn't change the behavior. The brain has been reset, but that calls integration. So substance abuse, I know that people use plant medicine to go and have fun. But if we go back to the root cause, why people do that, it might make sense that, you know, in order to become childish and have fun, we need a substance that help us. Just the realization that you don't need that shit. <laughs> you're able, you're able that have fun and you're fine. You give yourself permission to, to have fun it's easy said. I think it's it's arrogant to to talk so easy about it because it's it's a life challenge for many people. Because sometimes the life gets so serious, all the thoughts, all the heaviness is so much on your shoulder that you're not able to even socialize. I have I know people, close people that we've never met that person without him being drunk because he doesn't leave the house without. He cannot talk. He cannot connect without having a zip because the life became so heavy. So that's the root cause. So it's painful, but it's something that human do. And uh, 
I'm aware that many people do that with mushrooms, but it's not only with plant medicine. We do that also with uh, with pharmaceutical medicines as well. There's so many people around the world that are addicted to um, sleeping pills. It's also highly addictive. You know, everything that is producing the hormones for you makes the glands lazy. So you're not producing that biochemistry naturally. So it happens with dopamine. It can happen very, very, very quickly. So, and good news is we can just replace it with activities that gives you the same joy, but are not addictive. A good exercise, like, you know, hitting the gym, walk, being in nature, swimming in the sea, having a nice connection with humans can raise the same amount of dopamine without any, you know, the, the natural way. Um, what else? Just some practices like being in the floor, playing instruments, being with animals. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the <laughs> baby here. This one is actually my shaman. He's my <laughs> big, big teacher. You know, I, I, I really learn a lot from him because he's unconditionally in joy and flow and always happy. At the moment. Dogs are really at the moment. He's always in the flow, yeah. Always in, in the here and now. And this is sometimes contagious. You know, he's, he doesn't need uh, any, any conditions to feel happy. So, yeah. That's the good news. We can condition our, our our mind to to be joyful, but also there's bunch of natural activities and actions we can take to enjoy life in in a way that it's supposed to be. I even choose the rules. That's how it is. You know, uh, I love exercising. I love being active. Uh, that's why I know every time. I just take just a short walk out and I come back happier, more centered, more grounded. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what Set I was... mm -hmm. Go ahead. Setting it back, like that was, you know, escaping life. Now we say, okay, I have the right, uh -huh. I have the right intention of healing. I know something inside me needs to be revealed. I know that I... I'm operating from autopilot. I am reactive to life and it's something inside. I don't see what it is. I'm seeking answers. That's where the calling comes. Then I would highly recommend or invite people if they have the calling, choose for places where setting and setup is in the highest priority. You know, like um when we consume these powerful medicines we need uh, we need facility we need somebody who can hold space for us who we can trust because as i said you become very vulnerable i'm sure with your mushroom experience you felt the vulnerability i'm talking about over one so you really need to feel very safe and people professionals who learned how to hold space, how to, uh, you know, either in the silence or specific music that is extreme good guidance to take you, having what is always recommended to have objects around you that reminds you to love, having crystals, things that carries energy, maybe a glass of water for the purity. And, you know, I always take something with me to the, ayahuasca ceremony that reminds me to love is usually my ring my marriage ring because uh, yeah that reminds me to the biggest love that I can relate with in this avatar so that always saves me because love has the highest vibration uh, yeah setting and set up person who can hold space professionals a place that is in line with the vibration of the medicine because medicine has a high vibrational feminine loving energy. So the environment where you receive it needs to be implied with that vibration. So you can let go. So you can, you know, and yeah, holding space, elements, place, 
highly recommended being uh, disconnected from distractions, um, meaning your phone. Uh, highly recommended for the first timers to do it alone, not even with loved ones, because we tend to worry about each mm. other. I didn't know right. about ayahuasca. I thought it was always a group experience. Group experience, but I prefer ah, yes. to do it with strangers. All oh, right, got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. it, maybe you're like you know. I saw many couples doing it also for the first time, but you know, in the place where I go, they they ask them to 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 be far away from each other. Wow. But it's, it's, <laughs> in our journey, you cannot go inward hand to hand. You know, and if you're like, especially woman, we have this mother instinct that if we hear our partner screaming, crying, vomiting, uh, shaping in the bed, we might get distracted from from our own journey. Yeah. So it's always um, if you have friends that you really can give each other space. It's all about space, you know, because the professionals who can lead the ceremony, they know that uh, they're just there to give love and assist when the assistment is needed. They don't even talk to you. That's, again, I can talk only about ayahuasca ceremonies because they believe the medicine is you and medicine. You're meeting the medicine and the medicine is healing you. Nobody is there to interfere. They're chanting, sending love, asking for permission, inviting all the guidance and love and spirit animals and angels and great spirit but they know that the medicine will help you and nobody interferes they're just there to help and this is very important so space 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 and again space that's why better just you know do it first maybe alone or if you want your loved ones to do it i did it separately my husband did it separately but after a few times recently we've been able to be in the same room but far away from each other and receive so we did that, but it took us a few years. Mm -hmm. so, but do you, would you repeat it? Would you prefer it that way or do you prefer it still alone? Um, currently, I set the intention to be in the service of the medicine, uh, meaning uh, I receive, I am just when I have the calling. I go on the mattress I receive, but um, once a year, I go down to Costa Rica and I do volunteer work in the center that I mm -hmm. mentioned. So uh, that's what my heart desires. So I uh, I help in the ceremonies once a year. That's something I will do regardless of calling or no calling. That has nothing to do with my personal healing journey. Well, it does, it does actually. You receive a lot when you're there to help. Hmm. So yeah, whenever I just do it from the flow when I feel that there is a calling to receive, uh, I will receive there as well. Like last year, I went, I was there for a whole November. Uh, in the whole month, I have received only two times. That was more than enough. And uh, yeah, back to your questions. Um, I don't we don't plan that let's let's go and drink soon again if we feel we would yes. if it's necessary separate we do it separately but I recommend because it's 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 more efficient if you just you know go absolutely alone it helps you even to face lots of shadows that yes. you carry without worrying about friends and family just you become one with your group if the stranger become your soul family, you're like, you know, you always connect in a very deep level with the people that you receive. It's just guarantee. But it's easier to, to do it alone. Uh, when you go on these retreats, are there people there who have taken the time to probably research it and sign up for the program and come there and then act like Karens and they want to talk, uh, talk to the managers because <laughs> it, it hasn't, the medicine has not worked. Have you encountered such, such people in the retreats you've been to? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. Do they, do they also, let me add this follow-up, do they also affect your experience? Because I have heard about people being like energy vampires. And when you are in that level, you kind of have a very... You are so sensitive, sensitive, you will understand feelings more and these people kind of drain your energy if they are in the ceremony. Do they impact your journey too? That's my question. Well, actually, the, when you set the intention to help and you also drink the medicine a little bit, uh, you receive also guidance from the medicine, how to reply, how to uh, protect your own energy mm -hmm. and how to... Uh, how to reproject because usually what happens when people drink the medicine the first thing that happens they see who they become but it's so hard to face that the first intention I told you they try to project that on others you know and then through the time you learn how to truly listen to people with your heart and feel the energy behind the world you know Maybe somebody who comes and complains about, but I signed up, I read the internet, I will have this and that, but I haven't, I had another, another. And then, you know, with some, you know, without a guard, with an open heart, you can just, you know, feel what comes, the energy behind the words, and you can ask them, how do you feel about this? Is that how you feel usually in life? And then you know the energy could be shift because when they when you drink, regardless of how angry you become, you're a little bit more receptive and open, you know. And um, people who who assist and facilitator and helpers and the shamans themselves, they they are guided all by the medicine. So you you ask the right questions, and either they will realize that they are projecting their own fears and anger on you. And latest when they go back home, sometimes after a year, you're like, oh, my God, you start, you know, still receiving messages. Oh, my <laughs> God, I was doing this. And because that's what the medicine showed me. That's maybe who I become in life, a demanding person, a person who requires always extra services. It's just, you know, the first thing that happens that she shows you who you become. And whatever comes up is leaving you so now he wants to go down <laughs> <laughs> so this is also something Sorry. is it a request to come back did he hear things that we don't hear i'm sure he heard yes. the sound now he's protecting me <laughs> <laughs> yeah they are amazing i mean our dog when the his mom is coming before even she dials the keys at the door, he knows. He knows, yeah. Maybe 20 seconds earlier, he knows that, yeah, she's coming. And he jumps to the door. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but this is not, this is um nothing to be worried about. The place I'm talking about, they're operating more than seven, eight years and on a weekly basis, plus minus 90 to 100 people visit this place. So they have a data and experience of, um, you know, and uh, yeah. Now they are based in Spain? And no, Costa Rica. Costa Rica, uh, beautiful. Okay. It's the only government on earth currently that has, you know, the government itself legalized the plant medicine. So and that's that's also something I I highly recommend because you know it's again back going back to sacredness. If you're doing it in in countries that is extremely illegal and it's just you know and you you yes. shaking in because I I wouldn't like you know you have to feel comfortable. That's why in Costa Rica there are many retreats that serve in plant medicine. Plus this specific place I'm talking about that I you know like I became family with them. They have medical license. Meaning you can consider this this place as a clinic where you go to polish your soul and using plant medicine as the, you know, as the tool. But you have also facility, you have people to talk to, you have a clinic there if you want to talk to doctors, to MDs, 
They have a beautiful spa and, you know, and it's like a small community where you can, you know, and it's the good thing is it's just far away. You can also different time zone of your home. There is a possibility for you. If you're from Europe, the time zone is different, but people go usually also a lot from US. So it's not a huge time difference, but it's, uh -huh. it's good that you have the possibility to, to, um, put the phone to the side and disconnect a little bit from your from your day-to-day -day life and just, you know, enter the, the space that, um, you know, you're more connected to the nature. And uh, yeah, you know, back to your question. This, um, in Spain, can medicine is not a crime, but is also not 100% legal yet. Mm. So yeah. But Costa Rica, a great destination. I would love to see that country. So, yeah. do you do you have any calling to to receive the plant? Uh, yes, I do. I do. Um, it's just been that I haven't had the opportunity, and yeah, I, I am waiting for the time to come so that I can just actualize it. I, I hear the calling. Uh, and it's been the same for mushrooms. I've been hearing about them, people talking about it, listening to podcasters talking about it. And there were several occasions that I wanted to get it delivered to me mm -hmm. or uh, lay my hands on it. It didn't work. And I was once talking to a friend and I kind of felt that she's open to hearing this story. And I was right. And she had experienced that. And I said that I, I feel that I've been ready for several years, but the master has not yet appeared. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah. wait a second. <laughs> and she brought me a mushroom, which was very small, something like half a gram uh, in total. And it was enough for me to feel that yeah i really need to um experience it more and i am ready to get a higher dosage of it and that's when i simply um got my own mushroom and uh consumed it very conservatively gradually <laughs> over time you know uh first with a small dosage later weeks with a higher dosage it's been a beautiful experience and you know it's been something like it's a new era in my life and a new chapter so different from the previous ones it, it, it it's caused a great change you mentioned the movie the soul i'm going to watch it maybe even tonight i will let you know <laughs> what i'm gonna get from it that's wonderful. I watched it many times. And actually recently before before my last trip to Costa Rica, every time, you know, we are different, you hear different things. And yes. it's just like, it's, it's yeah. And it's because in, in, in animation, it's easier, you know, to, mm -hmm. to grab. And it's just, you know, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, There's let the, me know. Yeah, yeah, I will definitely write, uh, write you back. And there's this animation, the Polar Express. Have you watched it? No. It's, I'll watch that. Yeah, it's <laughs> simply about Santa Claus. And uh, it looks like a trip. It's uh, really <laughs> one day I, I had a weekend and a long weekend. I was... Decide, uh, I had decided to take a, a, take a certain dose of mushroom on the following day, day of that night that I watched the movie. And when I was watching the movie, I felt that I had a trip. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the next day's trip was canceled. Uh, that Maybe that is just my interpretation, but that film is so trippy. And things happen. People fall from the train, but and, uh, land on a safe place anyway. Mm. People die, but no one gets hurt. <laughs> that is a reference to a to a song called "Honey" in Italian band. I forgot the 
name, yeah. Um, there's one difficult topic that you talked about and I want to bring up again. The realization that we are one with everything, even the things that we hate. And there was this guy from Maps who had Jewish background. And he said that I realized that I am one with everything. And I hate Hitler, but I am Hitler too at the same time. So mm -hmm. we are one with everything. And then when we come to this duality, as you put it, we struggle to, you know, kind of wrap our heads around the fact that the people that we hate, we are also them. We have the same origin. That's how I perceive it. That there was that initial pulse in the universe and that was the beginning of being. And then everything originated from that good and bad and that pulse was you. Um, so what's, what's what, what lessons have you heard to deal with this duality? Or wrap your head around it. I feel that good and bad coexist together. If we don't judge and don't put any evaluation to good is better, bad is bad, how would you perceive good if the bad was not existing? Would that light exist without darkness? Hmm. That's how duality is in, you know, how I perceive duality, that existence exist within duality if there was not you and me mm. how would i get to know you if it was only me i saw in one of my journeys that you know i was it was i came out of that journey and i was really sad and crying i'm like oh my god i can't i don't want to do this life anymore i saw myself as god the creator and i saw i was alone yeah. I was so alone and I just felt in love with myself. And I, you know, like that happened, that cosmic drama happened because I felt in love with myself and universe is expanding because the whole existence is a love story. You know, the duality, if, um, yeah. So the game exists within the good and bad, but if we just remove the judgmental mind, the, you know, the evaluating and, you know, like just the judging and just watching the movie, you know, even within a movie, if the character, you know, like there is a monster, you just know it's a movie. You don't get angry at the monster because the monster exists because if the monster doesn't exist, the hero wouldn't exist as well. So yeah, but it's this is an understanding, a realization is not very practical when we are triggered from the bad or you know. And I would say this example is a little bit uh, nasty. I say with a purpose, God put the nose on the face. And you're shitting from the back far away. <laughs> <laughs> you don't smell your own poo all the time. But you have to poo, right? Otherwise, you will explode. Uh -huh. <laughs> so everything has its purpose. But the nose is here, so you can smell the flower. And this, the other part is a little bit with the distance, but it exists. So... Mm -hmm. I feel like we have to bring lots of more acceptance to everything and uh, don't get, you know, like it's easy said, lots of shit is happening right now around the world, right? Um, but we should not get caught up in stuff that we have zero influence. The only influence we have is just pray for life. You know, when all these things that are were used to happen in our country and now in the region, you know, our region is bleeding. The Middle East is always, you know, like we have some karmic things that is happening right now. Uh, we can sit, 
no scroll social media and curse mm-hmm. each side have a side and hate or we can just encourage in our heart and play for light to be the more dominant part so the you know the darkness will heal as soon as possible so yeah duality can get very overwhelming but uh, that's how we exist how we are dreaming this dream in within a duality day and night and um, I would consider this as the beauty of the blessing, beauty and gift of, of life, experiencing life as a human. And if something is extremely overwhelming, it's just, you know, we sh- should concentrate only on, on the light and pray for the light and, uh, you know, remind ourselves that uh, it's just a dream. Don't know if you watched the uh, Inception. Yes. <laughs> At the end, when he was turning that tool, it didn't stop. So maybe he was still dreaming. Maybe he was still, who knows? You know, it's the famous code of Rumi. Within a dream, on, only a dreamer will consider a dream as the reality. Mm. Maybe we just came to share love and accept everything and you know, we don't know enough. We don't know enough to hate each other and, you know, judge the good and bad. But I truly feel if something is hurting you and is just too heavy for you, we always have the free will to set some healthy boundaries within our family line, within our city, friends, within our social media messages and uh, uh, should not, you know, overwhelm ourselves with lots of uh, negative. Not that close the eyes and not look out. If there is an influence, if I can do something today to share my light, dear God, help me to do so. If not, let me maintain the peace because I'm only responsible for this dream. Only this. Your only responsibility is your own avatar. And within your own avatar, you can be a light to somebody else. Nothing else. We are not Robin Hoods, you know. Only You're not with- Superman. You're not Superwoman. Yeah, only within your own light and love, you can help somebody else with being the light, with being happy. Like, you should never feel guilty if you have a good life because if I help myself, I can smile. I'm just passing, just giving a smile to somebody else would be a beautiful help. If I have excess money, of course I can share the money as well. I have excess energy, of course I can do a podcast with you today and talk to you about good things. But if there is no capacity, I honor my own capacity. I We always need to acknowledge that circle of the influence today is this and that. And within this dream, I have limitation because I get tired. I need food. I need to sleep. I need, you know, I have limited uh, words I can share daily. But within that, if I take care of myself, if I have self-love, I can be more energetic. I can be more efficient in life. And that's how we can be healers. We can never heal somebody. You know, what does a shaman do? They maintain their own energy so they can hold space. Mm-hmm. For more. That's what I hold in my heart as ultimate truth. Beautiful. Thank you very yeah. much, Zohra. Uh, it's been a great uh, talk and a great conversation, and we have covered so many important things. I'm not uh, stopping. If you keep talking, I might keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, the thing is that Zoom is stopping us. So you have something like one minute, and then we have to wait for 10 minutes to open again. I will definitely talk to you more about. We'll keep in touch. And when I hopefully get the chance to meet Mother Ayahuasca. I will let you know about the experience. Maybe you are doing your volunteer work then, uh, there, when I am there. I don't know. Whatever is the right thing for you shall happen. And I truly want to thank you from the depth of my heart for this opportunity, for for your openness, for your uh, for your own light that resonates with other people's lights. So Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye, take care. 
Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Round the Fire. If you are watching this video on YouTube, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button. If you're listening to the podcast, please leave the five star review. It would cost you nothing but help me a great deal, especially if you do so on Apple Podcasts. Also, if you feel particularly generous, consider supporting me via Patreon, PayPal, or Bitcoin.